Welcome to Tony Talks. Welcome to Tony Talks. Welcome to Tony Talks. This is Antonio Moore coming to you from Tone Talks. I want to have a discussion today about Ryan Coogler and what happened at that Bank of America in Atlanta. Um, as you know, this is a Tone Talk show. We come weekly. This will probably be the show for next week um, because we're coming a little later in the week. Um, let's have a spirited and a powerful discussion. One of the things that I'm noticing right now is no one's giving you context, not only for what really happened throughout a full 11 minute clip, which I'll show today. That's part of the reason I was running a bit late, rendering an 11 minute clip for you to see the whole thing. Cause we're going to run that 11 minutes and let you see what really transpired. And, and then we'll go to calls after that. Cause everybody's showing you like one and two minutes. But we're also going to give that context inside of a greater discussion that we at Tone Talks, America, This Is a Slavery, have been having about wealth and the consequence of that. I mean, did you really think that you were going to have a decadent veil of black celebrity living next to a wealthless working age black population and there wasn't going to be consequences? Many of these people have never seen nobody pull out 12,000 straight. All right, so we just gonna get going then and, and, and have this discussion today. I appreciate everybody tuning in on this, their uh, Thursday. You know, we don't normally come on Thursday, but this is what happened today. We gotta have the discussion because everybody else is just giving you tidbits as if black folks got millions of dollars and this don't make no sense because they don't know. Most of these black people don't even know what the hell they talking about. They on Twitter talking like black people come in that bank all the time, pulling out $12,000 with notes. And they just don't. Now, that don't mean that you call the police, but they don't got no protocol. And this is what happens when you don't know no politics. So me, Yvette, and some a few ADOS followers are the only people really on the ground doing wealth on, on, on this racial wealth inequality on the real way. Not no academic stuff where you just write papers. And then you wonder why it's hard for black folks that look like what Ryan looked like that day to have money. But we're going to talk about it in the real sense. We're not going to have no abstract conversation. Can we talk today? Can we talk today? I, I'm looking at the chat. I want to. I want to make sure I give everybody a chance to fall in here and have this discussion. Woo wee! We gonna talk about it today. It's a crazy moment. Crazy time. Black people out here. Yeah. They're giving us clips. Let's talk about this a little bit before we get going. They're giving us clips out of context. Uh, you know, they're showing us one second. I had somebody actually say that it was a Karen. We don't know that. It um, sounded like a black girl to me. I'm not sure. You know, it is the South, but you know. Um, hold on one second. We're going to get into it. We gonna get into it. How y'all feeling? Tell me in the chat how y'all feeling about this Ryan Coogler thing. Uh, I mean, I want to know because everybody has their own like opinions, and I know Ados. We tend to be a bit more informed because we give it context of political backdrops and historically, and both in context of the history of Black folks in America, but also the racial wealth inequality that most of these Black people have no idea is going on. They know the impact, but they don't know the numbers, and so they just make up stuff like. Like it's normal to come into a bank and give a note to a lady that say 12 racks. Um, uh, somebody said the teller is described as a pregnant black woman in the TMZ report flagged the transaction for her supervisor. Okay. So did the supervisor call? Did that supervisor have her get on the phone? All these are questions. All these are questions we got to answer. We're going to have a call in at 310-388-3499. Please call in. Support the channel. Please, please support the channel. We're going to get going in a second and have this discussion. I kind of want, I'm, I'm looking at the chat. I want to let everybody fall in because I don't want to run the video and then, and then people miss the video because we're going to show the full 11 minutes of the video of Ryan Coogler and this arrest, I mean, detainment, not arrest. And, uh, we're going to have that discussion. For a lot of people, I think it's hard to digest that this might be a little bit more complex than they thinking about it. One of the things that I'm going to go into later on is the reality of wealth in Los Angeles, in Boston, in Miami, and in Atlanta. 
How many of y'all know that 30% of Atlanta black households live below the poverty line? Now, this isn't about excuse again. It's just about the context of the reality of what, what happens when you cut a whole group of people that look like this, let's zoom in, that look like this out of money. And then you go in there, having done no politics, and you get this situation happening. Can we talk? My goal is for a repetitive justice program. I ain't heard Ryan say nothing to us about no reparative justice. I could be wrong. <sighs> Let's get to it. He handed her an ID, as I understand. He gave her the ID. The note don't say I'm robbing the bank. But do the face say it? We know the numbers. Like, we don't only know the numbers on wealth. We know the numbers on incarceration. Like, you're talking. See, one of the things that's happened in, black, in the black space is because people are black, they're experts on black politics and black wealth, and they don't be knowing shit. That's not the way it worked with basketball, with singing, with bracelet making. But in politics, high school dropouts that don't know shit about, about black political science out here teaching y'all. In politics, people that didn't graduate from high school or damn near didn't and rap are experts on black politics. In this space, you have so little respect for academia, let alone expertise, that you guys just be sharing and tweeting shit that don't make no sense. Can we talk? I'm just telling you the truth of what I see. Motherfuckers don't even be knowing the basics. They don't even know how many how this is like a prison state for black men and how that context creates such a problem. You can't just do that. And have, well, hip hop made it seem like it was all okay, right? That day is over. So your black son that looked like Ryan Coogler, even if he find a loophole, is going to run into major problems if you don't do no goddamn politics. Choose. I want to talk. I want to talk. Whew. I got 400 people in here. I'm letting everybody fall in before I get going. I'm letting everybody fall in before I get going. We... We're coming a little later, but we're going to bring it. Again, this is Tone Talks. Uh, please subscribe, press the bell, share this video. But we're talking about this Ryan Coogler wrongly targeted as a bank robber. If you if you don't know about the story, what happened is bank staffers mistakenly thought Brian Coogler was staging a robbery, so they called cops, and the famed director actually ended up in handcuffs briefly. If you don't know who Ryan Coogler is, for the people that are just coming in, Ryan Coogler is the man who directed the Black Panther. So we're talking about this young black man. Shout out to him for getting his career going. I think he went to USC and he directed the Black Panther. That's who we're talking about. Now, he directed Creed, I believe, and also Fruitville Station. So that's not his only movie, but he's known for the Black Panther. So that's who we're talking about was behind this mask. Now, understand, let's also give context. This white mask is COVID. So everybody wearing the white part. He just happened to have a beard. Uh, uh, a beanie on and some sunglasses. And he have every right to have that stuff on. But there is context. Bank staffers mistakenly thought Ryan Coogler was staging a robbery, so they called cops, and the famed director actually ended up in handcuffs briefly. According to an Atlanta PD report obtained by TMZ, Coogler was detained after stopping in a Bank of America to make a transaction back in January. A completely legal transaction, mind you, but that's not how one teller took it. So this happened in January. We ain't heard nothing from him in, Feb in January, February. Now we can presume it's legal issues, but we ain't heard. This is not today. Kugler walked in rocking shades and a COVID face mask, not uncommon, of course, but he handed a teller a withdrawal slip that had a note written on the back. And so purportedly, this is a note. I would like to withdraw 12,000 cash from my checking account. Please do the money counter in the uh, in the back somewhere else. I like to be discreet. Now he have a right to have that, but I don't know how many times people see that kind of message at the same time. Hmm. Hmm. How's everybody doing? I'm looking in the chat, letting everybody chime in, give me their thoughts. I think there's two sides to this story. I'm much more with his than, than the other side, but there's absolutely an interesting story to be told here. Again, this happened in January. 
When officers arrived, they detained two people waiting outside for Ryan in an SUV and then went in and brought Ryan Coogler himself out in handcuffs. After an investigation, the police say this was all just a huge mistake and the fault lies with the bank employee. All right. Again, somebody said that this is a pregnant black woman. I have not confirmed that, but if that is the case, God, I hope not, because this will lead to probably her termination. I would love to know the protocol for the bank. But again, we're talking about Ryan Coogler, who directed the Black Panther, black male. Okay. But we are talking about Ryan in the context of a world, and we're going to get to it, where the middle black family in LA is only worth $200. The middle black family in Miami is only worth $11. The middle black family in Boston is worth $8. And where this actually happened in Atlanta, 30% of black families are below the poverty line. And we talk about the poverty line, we're talking about a family of two making $17,000. Not worth making. Hmm. All right. And you're pulling out $12,000. Not your fault, but if you don't do no politics, there's going to be a consequence. Can we talk about it? But before we get going with actually talking about this show, again, the call in is 310-388-3499. Again, the queue is filling up. Let's watch a clip of actually what happened. Because what we're getting is one and two minutes. I'm going to show an 11-minute clip. Stay tuned. Watch the whole thing of exactly what happened with Ryan Coogler. Hey, sir. I'm in favor Hey, dude, so just, just hang tight right there. I'm going to talk to you for a second. Just one sec, bro. To what? Just one sec. Somebody take my glasses off my face. Take your glasses off. Panic attack, bro. I got you. You need some air? I mean, I, I got to be honest with you, man. I just... I just can't believe this, man. Is that, is that, my, is that, my, is that my, my family baby nurse? Did y'all have her detained right now? Who? The baby nurse, the, the Filipino woman that was in the back seat. Did y'all have her detained right now? Yes. She's just being detained. All right. Uh, can you, uh, just, did the officers explain what's going on while we're out here? Not really, man. All right, so we got yeah, a call base. I, 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 I heard somebody ask me if I passed a note. Yeah. Somebody been one of these. So, moves, so ba basically, we got a call, and uh, from what we got the call, it seems like someone was trying to rob the bank. Uh, something about you passing a note to the teller, something to that effect. Uh, can you just tell me what's going on? Or? Yeah, bro. I it's a, it's a it's a medical assistant that works in my house that prefers me paying in cash. Every time I make a withdrawal to pay her, you know, because it's a, a large amount, she works a lot. Yeah. You know, if I if I don't if I don't write down on a note how much I went out, and then I don't want it ran through the money counter right there at the desk, the whole bank ends up looking at me because they just hearing money going through the money through the account, and I don't feel safe. I don't feel safe getting money out like that. So every time I go to withdraw it. You know, I, I put that, I put the amount, the account I want to take and all that, gotcha. and I put my own card in, and then they, and then they usually take, I mean, I, like always, just, just get the, get the money from me, you know what I'm saying? Gotcha. Uh, I, I, I don't understand So you, you make, on. you make, well, that's, like I said, that's the reason why we're out here, and that's the reason why we detained everybody, because we didn't know exactly what was going on. So you make these. I, I, I mean, I, I gotta be honest with you, man. Y'all never, like, y'all never asked me what was going on. So yeah, well, unfortunately, we in, in those situations. In a situation. Where's the ID? In his pocket. In this. Is the ID in his pocket? Just hang tight. How? Sir, so the reason that we don't. Uh, obviously, obviously. Just give me a sec, man. I got. You. Go ahead. Hey, do you need to get some fresh air? You need to take the mask off for a second to get some fresh air. No, okay. I got a five-month-old baby at home, bro. I don't, want, I don't want to take my mask off, bro. Yeah, yeah, I understand. <laughs> so I'm just trying to manage my emotions right now. I understand, you know I understand. So, um, like I was, uh, I was about to tell you, um, the reason we don't uh, come out and, and, and unfortunately, 
the, the seriousness of the call doesn't allow us officer, to. Officer, let me ask you a question, sir. Yes, sir. You're talking to me right now, and I'm cuffed in the back of the car. Yeah. My team from the driver's cuffed. Yeah. I'm imagine in the back of the car. Yeah. And, 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 and my baby nurse that takes care of my baby is cuffed in the back of the car. Yeah. Is there any reason we can have this conversation once you get these cuffs off everybody? And we, yeah. And we, and we back to being chill, like, yeah, yeah. standing nervous society. Yeah. Is that's fine. For that, bro? Yeah, that's fine. We'll, we'll go ahead and uh, get you out of the handcuffs. I'd mean, love to have this conversation with you, man. But I got this, you. This is, uh, I understand. We, we just, uh, I, while they're getting you guys out of handcuffs, Hold um, I, 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 I stated to, to the officers that arrested me that had, that had their glocks off. Yeah. But I was pulling money on my own account. I understand. I, I, put the, I put my own bank card in there before they let you in the back. You know what I'm saying? So, so and, and we, we have to confirm that you gotta understand we can't we don't come out because of the seriousness of the call we don't just come out and unfortunately in a situation like that you don't get the benefit of the doubt we detain and then we ask questions later um that's what exactly what i went inside for hey you can you can take them out the other people that are hanged up um, so that's why we come out with weapons that's why you're detained and then we ask questions later because of the nature of the call so, um, Rock. Sit again, sir. I, um, it's, it's, it's nothing, it's nothing, it's nothing for me to say, man. Like, I, I, I gotta get all y'all names. Yeah, that's, that's fine. fine. That's yeah, fine. yeah. That's, that's not fine. a problem. Um, y'all got cars. No, we no. don't have cars, but we'll, yeah, if you, yeah, if you yeah, got you something to things. write on, um, do you have anything? I, I, I'm not reaching into nothing, grabbing nothing. Y'all no, so can give me something okay. to down on it. Y'all can put it down. All right. Yeah, you can give me something. We'll, we'll, we'll get you something to give you right, everybody's sure name. I'm not reaching in there, bro. Like, I just came in. Yeah. Ryan had guns drawn me in the wall, bro. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get my own money out of my own account. You know, you know what I mean? Like, like I, 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 I don't want to be in there with you. I got it. I got it. Hold on. She ever had it. Hey, she can. You, 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 they can have a seat in the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah she can go back. Oh, you have the keys, Pat? Oh, okay, it's you can a, give her the keys. It's a major problem, man. And, and the officer that was arresting me, I was trying to communicate that with you. You know what I mean? Yeah. I got, I got, y'all reaching for my badge. I got my ID hanging on my hip. I got you. You know what I'm saying? It's hanging on my hip. Yeah. You feel me? Like, it's not. Like, I got it in my bank card. You feel me? Yeah. Like, I. I, 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 I do, you, do, you, do you understand where we're coming from? Do you understand that we're not, we didn't just show up here and put draw guns on you? We showed up because the call was, uh, came in. I, 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 I understand yeah. that somebody fucked up. Yeah. That's all I know right now, you know, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Um, I know it's, I'm on, I'm on while you're trying to make a movie. You know what I'm saying? In, 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 in Atlanta, you know what I mean? I didn't have the right letters to Stacey Avery for the whole internet to understand why I'm here. So my work is employing a dollar people here. You feel me? I'm trying to take care of some personal business. And I get two hammers from Hey, uh, y'all do me a favor and give it, uh, write down all our names so, so and put I, it on I a paper for him. He don't have nothing to write on. Okay. Just put all of us. I just had guns going to take money on my own account. Yes, you know what I'm saying? Hey, do me a favor. Do me a favor. Just step out. Y'all do me a favor and just step out. Yeah. Good job. It's a problem. I need everybody. They're writing all, your, all our names down. You know what I'm saying? And I need to find out who made that call in there. Yeah. Okay. You know what I'm from the bank. Yeah. I, need to, I need to find out who made the that's call. Fine. That's yeah. fine. You have all right to do so. Yeah. I got, I got. But I just want you to right. understand what, 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 what my sergeant's advice have, on the nature of the call. That's, that's you, all I need you to understand. Have you ever okay. considered speaking to them before you make a transaction like that? Have you ever had something like this happen? Have I ever been arrested? No. No, no, no. no. <laughs> Wait, what? Listen to what he said. Have you ever... No, I am listening. Okay. Have you ever considered speaking to them about what it is you're trying to do prior to doing uh, so, so can i explain something to you yeah bro? i went to cvs out here uh that he got a vaccine i came outside and smelled like the smoke in the, in, the, in, the, in the parking lot you know what i'm saying i was getting a vaccine yeah i'm not trying to out here bro like i'm not saying out loud how much money i'm taking there. That's, That's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm not no, talking no. about speaking to somebody like that. I'm saying, no, no, hey, can I speak to a manager in an office somewhere? Have you ever considered I, I, doing I'm something like that? I'm considering now that y'all yeah. trying to take money off. But up, to, the, up to this point, every Bank of America I've ever gone to, never happened. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? I understand. So, so, so y'all explaining y'all perspective, right? Yeah. Y'all the ones with guns and vests. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. what's, what's my perspective? What's my perspective? I don't know. You at, the, at, the, at, the, at the bank, 
she never said it was bro. Yeah. Like, I, like I, 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 I said, hey, is that gonna be okay with you? She said, yeah. I put my own car in, put my own pen in. She asked to see my ID. I gave it to her. Yeah. And she goes in the back, and I'm waiting for the, for, for the and then the people keep coming out. Hey, they taking care of you. They taking care of you. Yeah. You know, you know, it's sure. taking a little while. Next thing I, I hear. Yeah. I hear Glocks getting pulled out. That's what I hear. I hear Glocks getting pulled out from unholstering. Hey, sir, can I talk to you for a minute? You understand what I'm saying? You, you, so you, you see my perspective? Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so I mean. Not every, how many officers you got on there? It's, it's not, man. I mean, yeah, there's five of us out here. So, so it's. Can you uh, give him the case number regarding the yeah, incident? Yeah. That way he's... What's the case number? Say it again, sir. You have to get it on. There's no one's withholding anything. From... Wow. Do we have any more of their property? Yeah, right here. Give, it, give them all their property. No one's withholding anything from yeah, you. No, no one's... No, can, I, can I just... Go ahead, take your time. Lundy, can you give me a case number? Y'all are withholding shit from me though, right now, right? What are we withholding? So I call Atlanta and I say, hey, Officer Fernandez, who's that? Yeah, that would be me. I got first initials on y'all names, right? Yeah. Why they not on here? I'm going to give you a case number. Why they not on here? Let's put the first initials on here. Like they got on y'all junkies. That's why we're giving you the case number, dude. Calm down. You're telling me to calm down, Officer. Yeah. Yes, I am. We're giving you a case number that identifies every single person that was on here. We've got cameras. Excuse me? I don't know how case number is working. Okay. Yeah, like I, I, I got you. I just know you got a very common last name. Fernandez? Yes. Okay. And I'm going to call the officer. I got I'm call Metro Atlanta and say Officer Fernandez. And they probably got more than one. I got you. That's all I'm saying. Okay. You feel me? And you telling me you got a problem? 6699. All right. Well, we're going to give you everything that's associated Thank with this call. Thank you. Everyone's recording. There's no question about what happened. All right? Put the case number on that same yeah, one. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so the teller said that you weren't speaking to her. And that's and I'm just telling you what she uh, what she said. She got she got look man. If she got scared when a black dude handed her a note. You know yeah, I mean like, I, like I, I, I I don't know I don't know what else to say. To that. Yeah, I don't know what to say so, to that either. I mean so that. I wasn't speaking to her. Like, hey, bro. I asked I asked her if she could do that for me. Right? Yeah. And she said and she said what it come? I said it's my second. I said, yeah, I said, yeah, give her my ID. Crazy. You know what I'm saying? I was talking to her the whole time, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I, if she was scared, yeah. she gotta admit that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like, yeah. You know, like, I agree. And, 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 that's, and that's fine, bro, but. So that's, the sh that's it. So. Whew. So I want you to see the whole clip of everything. And I take the side that he should be able to pull out his money. Um, and that the bank was in full like air, but I want to give it context of how, when you don't have a group of black folks with wealth, it creates an environment for this to happen quite regularly. In addition, some people in the chat said, uh, Kevin Feig or someone else will be able to pull that kind of money out. You know, cashless world is, it's not common unless you're running a, a cash business. Like you need that kind of cash, um, pay maybe at a grocery store for any individual to have that because they use cat, they use cash app, they use Zelle, they use uh, credit cards. So this is very uncommon. And then you have this reality of, of like that's not his local branch likely. So you have that kind of thing, and then you got fraud in uh, Atlanta right now, real heavy. And that's just to give the backdrop. I take the point of view that the bank didn't go through the right protocol neither did the police right and i want to have this discussion in the context of of real real data we talking about ryan coogler but we also talking about black wealth we talked about it before before i take the first caller tonight middle black family in la is worth 200 liquid i did this article for the black newspaper here the sentinel um los angeles also the middle of miami color of wealth report showed that the middle black family native black family worth 11 dollars in boston is eight and again in, in atlanta 
thirty percent of the black families live below the poverty line. You can see that here based, based on Department of Health and uh, Human Services. Family of three is twenty one thousand dollars income is the poverty line. So it's probably like 50 or 60 percent if you actually look at real poverty line. What I will say is what Kugler went through today. I also went through with Freeway Rick. I didn't, you know, I'm filming the documentary Freeway Cracking the System. We ride through, I think, Burbank to go see Dr. Dre. I think that was who we was going to see, but we was going to the studio actually to see, I think, one of Dre's artists. Um, and they pulled us over and they pulled us out of the car and it was nothing in the car. And when you were riding with a felon, it's a whole different thing in terms of search and seizure because they have def different abilities to search. But they put us on the on the on the uh, curb, handcuffed us, and I ended up having to do a file a whole complaint similar to Kugler with the Burbank Police Department on on this whole issue uh, type of issue. So it is traumatic for those people watching it. But like, you know, if you in the right, you in the right. Let's take the first caller tonight. Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? I'm all right. Let me let me bring you a little closer because I got the speaker a little far so we can hear you a little better. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So um, I, I I would say this. This was like a hell of a reality check. Um, the, and something that you and Mr. Vet kind of say all the time is that the decadent veil is kind of being lifted. Um, and it's happening more and more and more. Um, it was something that, that I said maybe at the beginning of the pandemic with that 2020, and I didn't know it was going to keep going, but at least 2020 and everything kind of happening after was like the year of the black light because it exposed so much that we were either in denial about or didn't really know. And, and, and one of, I think, the biggest takeaways from what you guys do in terms of showing the data, my, my biggest issue is everybody knowing statistics is not impressive at all. Um, just because of the fact that if you're using statistics or using data out of context, then it doesn't really mean anything. So I have to, um, on, on, on my own talk show that I do a friend, do with a friend of mine, and, you know, of course, that whole black city power is $1.6 trillion now. And so people were getting excited or, or talking about how black people don't know how to handle money and were financially irresponsible. And I had to sit there and explain to him in that very same clip. I was like, yeah, it rose to 1.6. Now look at how everybody else yeah, because 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 a lot of people use that spending power. But the first problem, for, first and foremost, is if you get a loan from Ford, they count that as I understand, whole thirty thousand dollar loan. But you can't go use that somewhere else. Uh, for you got loans just for right. a car. Now the second part right. is more important, which is Asians have half the workers and have nearly a trillion dollars of spending power, and uh, and understand that meaning they have half the workers of Black folks and have nearly a trillion dollars of spending power. Um, understand that also, um, and while we have what you said earlier, earlier I think it's 1.3, 1.4, something like that. And then you have also point, white yeah. folks have like eight or nine trillion dollars of spending power. Nobody ever talks about that. They never bring it up because that's not where you measure wealth. We're just using that because we don't want to deal with the fact we don't got no wealth in our accounts. But we'll go through that in a second. Go ahead, call it. No, I, no, you're absolutely right. I think it was one thing that I, I like to tell people all the time, especially I have this conversation with immigrants. Soap and, and soap and food, it's not, so, I mean, right. like, you know, I just don't think people understand that don't even make sense to use spending power as a measure of wealth, especially when your spending power really is low. When's the last time you saw somebody pay for their kid's college cash right from a check? Make it make sense. I had some white friends that did, but that's about it. <laughs> so, I mean, but, what but are you talking like, about? Yeah, kind of... And that brings me right. to another so, point. That brings me to another point before I get into the numbers. One of the things that happened for black folks, and I was gonna do this later, but I'll come to it now and then come back to the numbers, is this right here. So you have this image of black hip hop that now is old black hip hop. These people are 55 years old, but regardless, it was youthful at one moment, but it also lived in the shadow 
of, and let me see if I have that image, this. So you have this critical mass of high school educated and often even high school dropout uh, blacks that were either older boomers now or great gens that were able to buy homes. And you had this sit on top of it and able to go to banks and do things because they had seen a black person with a franchise. So they saw an old black person that doesn't speak that well, that looked like uh, Clyburn out of South Carolina, the congressman, and they were able to then anchor black folks have money. We in a different moment now. Puppy, damn near 55 years old. We in a moment now where the, the reality of the numbers we're going to go through in a second leave a consequence, not only for you and me, but for him too. So where was he when Adolf said we demand reparations? Oh, he was chilling, eating good, bringing out the Black Panther. Talk about it, caller. No, you you, you are absolutely one hundred percent right. This is this is one of those things where it, it it's almost like, and, and this is why I love what you do on this show because you're almost asking the questions that either people don't know to ask or they want to ask them, but they're too afraid to because they don't really want to hear the answer. And the answer is, we ain't got nothing. Um, and, and I keep telling people this all the time, especially people that are, you know, getting into crypto and different things. And I'm like, that's not, people keep throwing around, you know, generational wealth. And and, it, know, and, and, it's, wealth and, and it's not just that we don't have nothing. We don't have nothing against a lot more money. So let's go back. I'm the first person exactly. to ever tell you, ever. Because I, I, you can go look. Nobody has done this where I show you all of white families. Now, there were less white families, but not substantially less, like in the sense of this. All white families in 1980 had about $2 trillion. Two. By 1990, they have $24 trillion. Today, they have $127 trillion. So what happens is your next to nothing starts looking like a lot less as their money grows, especially when, hold on, in 1980, when white folks had two trillion, very few black people thought they were going to college. You have the white wealth expanding upwards and black dream following it with no wealth, no politics, nothing. But what you do have is a lot of Wakanda. So you have this reality of I'm going to go into a bank in a community that I might not know, and I ain't anchored no politics with $12,000 on a note and look like a gig driver because I didn't create no opportunity for the other black folks that look like me. Can we talk? So I'm not saying that Absolutely. the bank ain't wrong. The bank is wrong. But what I am saying to you today is that $12,000 on a note is problematic if you don't do the politics to anchor $12,000 in a note. The loophole's going to start tightening up. Go ahead, call it. No, you, no, no that's, that's trying to actually lead to the next where I wanted to jump to, which is the fact that, yeah, when, when you're talking about, like, Number one, the fact that everybody else recognizes how abnormal it is for Adolf to have access to that type of income, wealth, or cash flow, period. Do, does so everybody? Does everybody, though? Pause. I don't mean to talk over you. I, I would disagree. Don't nobody. Outside of the Adolf population that, we, that we've informed, that I particularly have done the, the report I did with Jerry, that I've been talking with Yvette, the reality of a fortune article and all the work on inequality.org. Black, most black people I run into have no idea they're black in terms of wealth. Then you add in that a, a chunk of y'all boomer hooks. So y'all been living with factory workers. So y'all see your image as if you're going to have the same opportunity or better than your factory worker because you went to Howard or you went to Harvard or you went to Yale, or you went to UCLA, and your factory worker had two houses, and you out here with student loans, and you out here with no home, with uh, a bunch of credit card debt at 45 years old. You out here with a full 20-year-old and got an asset in, the, in, an asset in your ass to give to them. And I'm saying this because in, 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 what, what, what we have to contextualize, caller, is this. Is this wrong? Absolutely. But does it make sense? Absolutely. Yep. Go ahead. Give me your last thought. Yep. No, so, so I'll, I'll add to it because I think this will, this will kind of add to the context of what you're talking about. So for me personally, I'm, I'm 22 years old. So I'm part of that, that gener Generation Z. Like it, it, for, for those of you all that are, are watching the show and you have kids that are, that are my age and younger, I need y'all to understand it is hard out here in these streets. And that, and that is an understatement. Mm -hmm. um, it, the, the, the fact of the matter is you know, my, as, as much as my parents, they gave me an incredible education, but we don't have any wealth. So for me to be able to go out, I can't even afford the life that my parents.
parents gave me and my younger brother. That that's the kind of you know time that we're on right now. And, and so when you're talking about that, you're talking about the fact that you know people say like, oh well, your grandparents were only making this little amount during the '60s and the '70s. Account for inflation and then find out what that means now. Because what what you're finding out is these factory jobs and they were only getting. But, he, but even inflation, the, the, even even that math, you know what I find is if you. It does a disservice. Again, white folks in the 60s had like billions of dollars. All the white folks. In 1980, they had two trillion. Shannon Sharp the other day, the guy that's on TV, tied in Hall of Famer, he said when he came in the NFL, he was making sixty thousand dollars. Sixty thousand dollars in his rookie year. I'm saying the way that wealth is counted now is it's no way to even frame for you how different it is. And it's not regular. You don't see this jump. This is a kind of jump that has never happened in the history of mankind. And you're in the middle of the heart of it being in America. And you and America built that wealth on top of you. Now, what I'm saying to you again is, is this was absolutely wrong. But what I'm also saying to you is that the decadent veil of black celebrity can't expect nothing different if they don't do no politics. Caller, I'm gonna let you go. Let me try to get some more callers in here. Caller, what's your caller? What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, how you doing? I'm Rasheed over here in PG County. R- Rasheed, <laughs> let me read something to you. I want to give this context because we got a lot of people in here that don't know that black people don't have wealth. They kind of know that black people are poor. No, I'm, I'm talking about this is a collapsed group. Like working age black people, we live on the image of old blacks. That's it. But you got to go back. And I keep saying this to you because you got to understand there was a moment when hip-hop was rising and these men weren't 55, they were 35. And at the same time, these old Blacks that are now 65 to 70 were 50. And it lived in the image of looking like Black people had McDonald's franchises and it was going to be better. In the 90s, before the 90s, America did not release wealth data. How do I know Thomas Shapiro, who came up with the term racial wealth gap, who agreed with me that the term is wrong, Read the book, or the book Black Wealth, White Wealth, Thomas Shapiro and Melvin Oliver. That's where it started. Came on my show and basically explains they didn't release wealth data until the 90s. That's how they gave you a Fresh Prince of Bel-Air about a Dominican man living in a white people garage and told you it was black folks, even though that we were redlined out of that area. But I come to it and I want to frame this before I come to you. Hold on. Can I share this? I wrote this for the black newspaper, The Sentinel based on the color of wealth report out of UCLA and Duke. The middle black family in Los Angeles only worth $200 liquid, 2017. Last week, Boston Globe dropped a bombshell about the state of black wealth in their city, showing that the middle black family in Boston had a net worth of $8. That's this report here. That was not a typo. The median net worth of a black Bostonian really is $8. That's a color of wealth report. These are native black families. So if in LA, the median net worth of a black Household, come on, let's talk about it. It's only two hundred dollars, while white folks have uh, upward of three hundred thousand dollars, while black immigrants have upwards of a hundred thousand dollars, while black Indians, Southeast Asian Indians, have four hundred thousand dollars. Make it make sense how you gonna be able to go into a bank and do this and not get accosted. There is a consequence that not only me. Not only Yvette, not only Adolf will bear for not doing politics. And he just felt it. So now let's talk about this. In Miami, it's $11. Miami Color of Wealth Report shows a staggering gap in liquid wealth between native Blacks worth $11 and Caribbeans worth $2,000. So we're talking about people from Haiti, ports country in the hemisphere having $2,000, and Adolf Blacks having eleven. dollars You are collapsed when you <laughs> below a group that's coming here recently from where they're coming from. But it's like everybody living collapse and don't know what collapse look like. What collapse look like this. That's what collapse look like. So don't be shocked when it's him. In a way, you ain't going to be shocked when it's your cousin or your son. Can we talk? Black celebrity not supposed to go through it? They're not supposed to go through it? Last thing I'm going to share before I come to you, caller, is racial differences in Atlanta's median household income widespread deeply rooted 30.2 percent blacks 
the poverty rate for blacks in Atlanta as of 2020 before during the pandemic, as we spinning through it, it's worse probably now. It was 30.2%. For whites, it was only 8%. But when we talk about the poverty rate, family of one, 12,000. See, they love to not tell you. This comes from actually a Department of Health and Human Services chart because they always leave the charts out and just tell us percentages because they don't want us to get mad. But that's one. That's a person making $12,000. So if you make 24, you wasn't even included. Two people making 17. So if those two people make 21, they not included. Three people, $21,000. Understand what that means. That means that likely 60, 70% of black Atlanteans are living below the poverty line. And you going out to get $12,000 in cash in the bank. And we don't understand where it comes from. Carla, give me your take on it. Well, I think it is, you know, to him, he thought that he was just going out for a regular day, going to the bank and getting some money. But for the rest of us, that is an abnormal amount. Honestly, the bank teller should have done her due diligence. Agreed. And with 30, not even 30 seconds, like five seconds of just reading his um, license, uh, seeing that he had his proper credentials, he could access his account. He has a PIN number and a debit card. He gave her, for her information, uh, his information to her. Uh, they should not have called the police. Agreed. That was wrong. Agreed. I, mean, I do understand. I do understand that they're saying, you know, like that was suspicious because the rest of the people around them couldn't afford that. But in reality, well, well, pause, 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 pause. They also uh, saying they also saying suspicious because of this way he did the process. So uh, make that clear too. No, but here's the thing. 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 It's not suspicious to give notes to bank them. Okay. Like my girlfriend works at a bank. My girlfriend works at a bank. People give people have special type of uh, account they want to put money in. They got a uh, uh, large bill demarcation. He literally wrote down, I saw the um, note earlier. Okay, yeah, you got it up on screen. I saw the yeah. note earlier. He wrote down instructions. It wasn't like he was like, Yeah, I agree. That's what I, That's what I said in my text. That's why I said in my tweet. I, I agree. I agree. And I, I yeah, think, I, and we also, let me say something else that's interesting about this. We don't know what was on the other side. So if on the other side is actually the, the withdrawal information, his name signed and everything else, did you flip it over, lady? Did you flip it over? It's a pet slip, right? Come on. <laughs> like, what? Like, what was he supposed to write on? He gave her a bank slip with his information that you proved. And she said in the call, she ain't verified who he was. So it was like, nah, like, this, this was this was ridiculous. But, um, um, you know, a, a personal story is that, you know, my girlfriend came up from Texas uh, five years ago in, um, uh, no, four years ago in 2018. And um, I helped her get the job, with, you know, with a buddy of mine that was working at the bank, uh, helped her get the job. And it was it was crazy because you know I guess they just they just assumed because you know like my like my family's old you know I'm, I'm one of the youngest children in my entire family all of my parents by hitting seventy um, and I'm in, I'm 33 this year right so um, my parents had me real late um, you know they're all boomers uh, when when the bank was messing with her trying to get her to quit from the job that I got her uh, you know they were pretty surprised that she was able to go a week or two without actually being called in for work. And her boss made it a real issue. We had to go to the EEOC, um, you know, go to the government to get them to stop trying to uh, do weird stuff to her. Because these people, they see, they, they, they understand that most of us don't have the ability to defend ourselves. But also, most also, uh, also, have... caller, you know, it's weird because, yeah. because talking sometimes to people like you who come from boomers, like your language is so vastly different than mine. See, I had the I had the first Gen X parent. Like my parents had me at 16, but my age puts me where they was the first Gen X parents. And what I hear undertone is still, I'm not gonna say a total lack of acceptance, but I don't think there's a gravity. I'm talking about social collapse because you grew up in an environment where all them people was doing good. It was a few that didn't do good, but they, they had to like be drunkards and not go to work. So I, explaining the gravity of a, 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 a environment where People, families are worth this much money and raising kids at the same time. I don't know if it's an anchoring for what you went through. Because your fr- I'm guessing your refrigerator was always full with food. I'm guessing that that the lights didn't get cut off. And if you got your lights cut off, it's because you was drunk and you didn't go to work. That's not this America. I'll let you say one last thing. Yeah, no. So, um, so my girlfriend did live that life. Okay. And it was a, it was a, it was a huge learning curve 
uh, you know, to, to be able to operate around individuals who just assume that you will be able to uh, compete on a collegiate level, right? Mm-hmm. So the thing is, is that, you know, she gets those work to try. And at the bank, they literally, uh, uh, you know, they have processes to go through. This woman literally was just like, oh, well, it's a black guy in here asking for money, so I'm not even going to read the note. I'm not going to do anything to try to help him. I'm going to automatically assume this individual is trying to rob me. And it's like, that goes beyond social collapse. Because, yes, I understand that all, that, 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 to, that the people who have money, this is a bank teller probably making like 13 or $15 an hour. That, that is not privilege in the bank. This is a worker. Like, so she should not have thought to herself that this individual was just trying to rob me. She should have thought to herself, Agreed. let me read this individual's information. Go to my manager. When she went to her manager, her manager said, oh, well, why don't you feel comfortable, comfortable with it? She said it in a 911 call. And she was like, well, if you don't feel comfortable, call the police. This lady did not do her due diligence to make herself feel Agreed. comfortable. She perceived this individual as a danger, and her perception led this man to open And, and, and so I guess I guess, that, I guess that's where I, what I'm saying is like, where you come back to is not where I come back to, though. You come back to an individual. Mm-hmm. I come back to this. You got a whole city that black people poor. And I'm saying to you, when you have that whole city, this stuff is going to come off of it. And I'm not saying it's right. It's absolutely wrong. But fix the goddamn city. And I'll stop making movies and, oh, make, and get your ass out there and do some politics. Caller, I'm going to let you go and let's get some more callers in here. Thanks. Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hello, Tony. John Edwards. I'm in North Carolina. We're talking today. You know, I, I feel, let me read something to you because I feel what that caller said. I absolutely blame the bank. I absolutely blame the bank. The process was wrong, and I blame the police officers. I'm not blaming just Ryan Coogler. I'm talking about a decadent veil that has lived far too good, far too long. Because black folks are collapsed, and you want to look just like us, but not do no politics for us, and you think you're going to walk into a bank and not deal with being us? Talk about it. So I said, this isn't a note that indicates any intent of bank robbery. But what you're seeing is the consequence of working as age ADOS males being wealthless. No, these tellers had no context for us having that kind of money. They should. That's why you do reparations. People really don't understand the centrality of the ADOS movement. We are the last answer for a Black America that wants to access the American dream. I come back to it, family of two making $17,000. 30% of Black Atlanta is living below that. So what does it mean for a family of two making $25,000? Probably 60%, 70% of that city, just poor Black people. That's America. Carla, give me your take on everything. Well, as a Generation X, I'm 52, so I'm probably around your father's age. Yeah. Growing up in the city, of Newark, New Jersey, where that city has been in collapse since the 60s. And being neighbors to, in the same county, some of the richest people in America, they knew who had money, they knew who didn't have money. And that uniform was being Adolf's. Come on. So when you went into those neighborhoods, you went into those neighborhoods, they automatically assumed that you didn't have any money. And him being in Atlanta, one of the most delusional places on the planet Earth. And fraud running heavy out in the ATL. Fraud running heavy out in the ATL because people can't ain't got enough to eat, man. And so we just got to be honest about I'll never forget. I'm not meaning to cut you off, but my homeboy, Trent, shout out to him. He told me one, that one time because it was weird. When you go to South Africa, they don't just target black males. They target all black people at the, at the store. It's just different because when I went to South Africa, but in a, in a, in America, they really be honing in on black males. When you walk around the liquor store and it's a lady following you. So I told him once, I was like, you know, this lady following me and I'm frustrated about the lady following me. And he wasn't justifying her following me, but he said, she followed you because the last dude that stole from her looked like you. We got to make it so the last dude that stole from her looked like somebody else. Because right now, you ain't going to be able to be this kind of decadent veil no more. There is no shadow of old ass black people to live behind. So you're going to have to figure out how you're going to walk around with $12,000 in singles like that. I'm just talking. Go well, ahead, Carl. That's the other thing. 
that's the other thing. Like, okay, he was going about his day, yes, right? Yes. Supposedly. But what he was really probably doing was preparing for a good weekend out at the strip club. We can't right? say that. I, 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 I heard that lifestyle. too. Let, 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 let's at least give the black man this. Let's presume he was going to pay the lady in cash. Go by what he said. I just want to do that part. I I hear that, but I don't oh, want to go down that path. Go Brian Coogler. Your check going to clear. I feel you. So why you can't pay her with a check? I don't, I don't like to speculate. And since we watched, we watched a 10-minute clip. That's why I wanted to show it, and he gave us an answer. I don't want to put him on trial right. and take away. He said he paying her in I, cash. I, I'm, not putting them on, I'm not putting them on trial, but I'm just putting the whole city of Atlanta on, Come on. trial. Come on. There's far too much foolishness and mayhem going on down there, and a lot of a lot of fake uh, balling. That you know, all of these all of these Atlanta socialites, these Atlanta so-called black socialites that moved out the Buckhead. And now they get ready to build a wall and fuck they're trying to separate from Atlanta to keep the rest of y'all from coming in there. No, I mean, I hear you, man. I hear you. I just don't like to go down the respectability. I don't like to go down the respectability uh, lane. This is legal in Atlanta. He pulled out his money. He wants to spend his money on that. But he told us that's not what he said, even on the call. Is he wants to spend his money how you want to spend right. his money? What my discussion is, right. is look. It's going to be tough to be this person anymore in America. And I'm saying to you, I, as I read it, he don't want, go ahead, go ahead. Go where you was going. That's, that's exactly where I was going. Is that right now, gas prices are hit $7 out there in LA where you at? $6 yep, change. Yeah, $6 a change. It, 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 economy, they got gas getting siphoned out of people's cars, people drilling holes in gas tanks. And you trying to go get $12,000 cash out of that. And you ate off. Yeah, and I, I think I think some people don't understand how odd that is. White, black, Mexican, whoever. Like that, like this is not this is largely a, a society that's moving to being cashless. Like it really is outside of like uh a person. You can feel how you want to feel. A lot of people have no no context for this, like and are just talking. It is really an outside the box trans a transaction in an America where people of lar that use larger wealth, they do it on cards. So add that part in too. And that's not an excuse to just step back and really understand how odd it is to ask for twelve thousand dollars in cash. Well, the oddity is the fact that we don't have those social classes because we've been cut out, and we've Come had on. our that's work from Come us on. for the last yes. four hundred years. Yes, yes. So now that now that the economy is what ran to the top, all the money is at the top. Now that's just so that's just pulling the veil off of it, as you say. So let's you know, give let's, let's give that let's money. give this context. Somebody just said I'm a retired RN. I know several people who work under the table, but do Adolf's people pay them that way? And that's the point. It it comes to a world where now probably the people you've seen pull out three thousand dollars to pay somebody, not twelve, three thousand, twenty two hundred, where they Adolf's. And I, I want to create a world. Well, you see Adolf's people do shit that normal American people do. What everybody else wants to do is make yeah, sure celebrities look good. Go ahead. This ain't the 90s no more, where you had all that drug money in the streets, and you had all that all that uh, rap money coming in. No, forget that rap That's money. Over. Forget rap, Forget drug money. You had this. I mean, I think everybody forgets how voluminous this was. You had 50-year-old black people that didn't graduate from high school with houses off of factory work. Oh, absolutely. For 40 hours a week. I don't think we understand. They all friends and everything. They didn't think about no politics. And that's what we living with. The consequence. I have an aunt and an uncle. I have an aunt and an uncle right here in North Carolina. They both have two pensions. What I'm talking about. They were able to come out of high school, get jobs at factories, go in the military, join the post office, get two pensions. Sitting on two guaranteed income each, telling us to go do what they did. Well, the factory closed. Yeah, they moved back to China. Yeah, somebody, somebody. So in now I can't walk out my door. Go ahead. I can't walk out my door and drive five miles down the road to the plant and get a job. And if I could, the plant, the plant may still be there, but they still hire.
retirement the same price. Yeah, at, at, at 19, at 1980, you had people, you had people making sixty-five thousand dollars with overtime with a high school education in nineteen like ninety money. Like I don't even think people have a contact. Caller, I got a full queue. I want to get to some other people. Let me, let me, let me get them in. Thank you, caller. Uh, woo! I love you, brother. I love you too. Let me say this. Somebody said, let's say on topic. This is the topic. The topic ain't just to feel good about him, feel bad for him. I'm tired of y'all doing that, feeling bad for one black man shot down or one black celebrity who's going through some struggle. The topic is why did this happen? Why do we not have any context for black folks having money? What is the consequence for not just black folks not having money, but basically black folks being wealthless? And did you even know? A lot of y'all didn't know. I've been known. This is say 2017. This is a black newspaper in LA. They didn't pay me to write this article. I did this as a sacrifice just to you. Y'all told me about uh, Garrity and this and that. This don't quote Garrity. This quote, quote Thomas Piketty, the author of The Capital in the 21st Century, 2017. Economist Thomas Piketty, the author of Capital in the 21st Century, recently observed that the level of inequality in the United States for those who work for a living is probably higher than in any other society at any time in the past, anywhere in the world. I told y'all that in 2017. Since then, we had a pandemic, we had Ukraine, we had inflation. You basically ain't here, but you think you here. You arguing for a man to be able to pull out 12 racks when you can't pay for your kids to eat tomorrow. What we gonna do about your politics? So if we not talking about everybody, I don't wanna talk about nobody. Can we talk about it? Call it with your name, where are you calling from? Uh, Philadelphia, Ohio. Give me your take on this. Well, my take on this, how many times has this has happened to people and they didn't realize that it was them? This happened to me back in 2005. I went to buy a house and I had to close on it. I didn't get the money out of my local branch, so I went to a branch in Columbus, Ohio. I went to try to withdraw $7,000 and the same thing happened. They brought the security. I gave them my ID, my work ID, and the passport. And that wasn't good enough. I didn't get that piece of property. But one thing with black people, you would notice that. We don't notice that. Like, we, I tell my friends that. Like, the vehicles would get people that type of money, we don't have no more in the younger, like the Generation X. You don't got these four jobs, GM jobs, where the extensions are good, and they have to see a black person with a decent amount in your checking account. That doesn't, that doesn't exist anymore. What Amen. we do have is like places like, like Atlanta where, we, where we, we hype it up. We say Rick Ross, well, he got the biggest house in Georgia. But what does it really work? You know, we don't, we, don't, we, we don't take in advance that we really don't take a deep dive and look at each other and say, how many of us really have that type of money? People, people think that that's 12000 to Bank of America isn't nothing. But to a black person, twelve thousand dollars is a lot of money, and people hate to hear that. You know, right now I live in Ohio. There's houses right now black people are trying to buy, like a little condo for a hundred thousand. They can't because white people will buy and use as rental property, and they're coming with cash. And black people are trying to finance it, but they they're, they're pushed out the housing market because the things in their price range, white people have the ability, and other investors from outside the country and all that have the ability to come in here. And buy the stuff with cash. So, 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 so let, let, let's connect that. So, the, the director, best known, I shout out him for doing Fruit Bill, but he's best known for selling us Wakanda, a fantastical African yeah. village where they got all the money in the world. Just got caught up in the web of being a goddamn Adolf. Yep. What I'm saying to you we all did that. is what you That's just wrong. went through. We got to care when you go through it, just like yep. we care when he went through it. Call it. Let me let you go. I got a full queue. I appreciate your personal okay. story. Woo -wee. I'm going to get you a couple more callers. Call it. What's your name? Where you call it from? Keep it brief. Keep it uh, on point. Uh, hello, guys. My name is Chris, and I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, and uh, I'm glad you talked about this topic because I was just talking about it, not just specifically, but with my friend. Um, are you familiar with the area that the bank was in? No, give it, give it to um, us. Give it to us. It's in, yeah, it's in, um, so like in West, it's 
Midtown, or excuse me, not Midtown, excuse me, West Buckhead area. Mm-hmm. So the area is super wealthy, um, like all the top, what do you call those school, like private schools, so super wealthy. So I, I'm not surprised that this happened, but uh, I was talking with my friend earlier today that I, I think it's so weird, it's such a weird story because I feel bad because he feels like he needs to uh, go to the bank with a note about withdrawing twelve thousand dollars and like that area if you just go that area is basically where the governor's mansion is at so, so pause for a second what you said money. is what you're saying let's clarify that is what you're saying mm-hmm. is he could have just let them count the money regular and it wouldn't have been a big thing in that area is that what you're saying oh absolutely yeah absolutely uh like i said the governor's mansion is, is just uh about a mile east um, of that location and uh, that area, you know, Arthur Blank, uh, like all the rich people, that's a super rich area. Uh, and so I just, I feel bad that, uh, and I want to say that I feel bad that he felt like he had to write a note. It's certainly messed up that it happened, you know, all of that should have happened, but um, I'm not surprised that it happened because given where reading and comprehension levels are in our world, like, they may have just interpreted that as something that it clearly was. And as you said before, there's so many issues that we have to address in order that, like, this is really pointing out a lot of different things. But uh, I just wanted to make that point and kind of put put a picture to it because, you know, one of the previous call- callers said a lot about the Atlanta area. Some of it is a little legit, some of it's not. But, you know, it shouldn't have happened, but it, it definitely highlights um, – Given that the the teller was an African American woman, it definitely highlights how um, black people are perceived, no matter what color. And I travel a lot throughout the city, and I see, in my opinion, but look, especially in the city of Atlanta, a lot of black people are running away from a lot of black people. I, I feel like I remember you making that point before. Well, that's a politics. With money. That's a politics, right? Yeah, absolutely. But but his policy, his shift went further. He created Wakanda. Can we talk about it? Or at least he put it on screen. Come on, man. Call it. Thank you so much. Look, man, I'm going to take a, another caller, then I'm going to let it go for the night. Let me take this caller. Caller, what's your name? Where you call it from? All right. Juanita, I'm calling from Atlanta. I knew it was you, Juanita. Give me that Give me that Atlanta taste on, on this. Yeah, I knew it was you. Who, who, who else it is? Come on, Juanita. Give, us, give it to us. <laughs> Pointed to uh, Juanita was the need for you to have it all counted in the back because somebody was going to try to rob you coming out of there. I don't know. You know, I'm not from there. That's what, that's, that's what I'm saying. It may be a mile from the governor's mansion, but they're picking up people down there because it is a mile from the governor's mansion and they know people got money. Okay. What's your take on the whole thing, though? What's your take on the whole thing? And, and, and they were dead wrong, but I'm not surprised at Bank of America. 
mm-hmm. you know, I, I, any, any bank in his marriage would have probably done that to him. Yeah, uh, and it's still not right. And it's not right what happened with the police. Juanita, I'm going to let you go. Thank you so much for calling. I think I'm going to try one more call because i got a few people who have been waiting. Last caller tonight. Caller, what's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, I'm Jerry calling from Florida. What's your take on this, Jerry? Are you the last caller tonight? Uh, I feel like, um, I mean, because personally, for most of my life, I graduated during the rapture of Obama, so I graduated into a recession, so since I had my master's and my bachelor's, I've been earning like less than 32 a year, and that's like before tax. Just recently, I got promoted, but from the mindset of the teller, I mean, I don't know how long she was there, if she just got that job, but I know she's pregnant, and with all the PPT stuff going on and everything, it's just like, you, there's so much pressure from the outside, there's so much pressure also from like white people, your managers. So if somebody like that came in, and the way that he presented, because you know, yeah, it's not it, it's, it, it's like layered. The way he presented the it's way he came in, the way the area, it's like you can't fall her for that because it seemed real sketchy. I and mean, then she's in Atlanta, she's pregnant, so it's like you know you got all this stuff going on in your mind. So am I just gonna let this pass, or should I tell my manager? Because I don't want to lose that, my job. Yeah, I would love to know the pro- pro- I would love to know the caller. I would love to know the process. And what the whether she went to the manager and was told to make the phone call, I believe this is a failure of protocol. But also, I just I guess for me, for the purpose of this show, I just wanted to give a backdrop of the the state of wealth, not only in Atlanta but in many other cities. You know, again, LA two hundred dollars liquid. Middle black family is worth two hundred dollars in Miami. Oh, they were for eleven in Boston eight. You got a city where probably they say thirty percent, but this is the poverty line for. 30 percent so we're talking about probably more like when you look at real numbers like of a family of two that makes like let's say forty thousand dollars you're talking about 60 70 percent of the city of atlanta probably in poverty and like there is a consequence for everybody being not okay with it but saying very little call it look i'm I'm gonna let you uh, go ahead say one last thing then i'm gonna let you go oh i was just gonna say like all of that even if people are unaware of it feel the consequences of it so there's just a lot of pressure to to um to do what she did so i just i mean you know it was wrong but you have to understand how desperate poor people can be and she wants to keep her job her losing that job is more detrimental than i feel like what happened to him that day yeah man it's a crazy it's a crazy situation thank you so much for calling giving your perspective this is antonio moore i wanted to come to you give you a a, a show where we looked at the whole clip, 11 minutes of it, and really got context. We understood the timeline. This happened in January. And we understood this in context of a history and a present where Black working age people are largely wealthless and see this in terms of a political impact that goes beyond just celebrity. Please go to tonetalks.org, subscribe or donate, share this video. Thank you for tuning in. Man, let's keep this disparity discussion going because this is a great segue into us doing politics. Join the Adolf Foundation and start making a change. Thank you.